question that I want to talk to you today about is, will a believer who commits suicide go to heaven? Now, this isn't just an academic question for me. Some years ago, a good friend of mine, a believer, tragically ended his life. And so this is a, a deeply personal question for me. But the place to begin is to ask, what does the Bible actually say about suicide? Well, there is no verse in the Bible that you can go to and find. There's no verse like, thou shalt not commit suicide. However, the Bible does teach us a great deal about the sanctity of life. For example, the Bible tells us that we are, uh, as human beings, created in God's image. It tells us that life is a gift from God. It tells us that God alone has the right to take it away. And that's why the sixth commandment says, you shall not murder. The context of that commandment is, of course, referring to human life, not animal life. There's only four examples that I'm aware of in the Bible that speak about a person who committed suicide. First, there's Samson. Then there's Saul, king of Israel. Uh, Ahithophel, David's chief advisor. And Judas, one of the twelve, the one who betrayed Jesus. Now, beyond these stories, the, the Bible mentions other people who were really despaired of life, like Elijah or Moses or even Jonah, and, and they were overwhelmed with despair to the point that they wanted to die, but they didn't take that final step to end their own life. The question still remains, does suicide prevent or preclude somebody from going to heaven? One stream of thought has argued that it does. An example that's usually given is Judas. According to Jesus, Judas was the one doomed to destruction. Acts 1.25 says that Judas went to where he belonged, implying that he went to hell. Now, that being said, uh, the Bible never says that Judas went to hell because he committed suicide. It just tells us that his eternal destiny was hell. And actually, when you, you dig into the scriptures a little bit uh, and look at the issue, what's implied is that the cause of his fate was not suicide, but rather his unbelief. Let me take you to John chapter 6 and verse 64. Jesus said, Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. So according to Jesus, we see that Judas did not believe in him as the Savior. He didn't believe in Jesus as his Savior. He didn't truly believe. And I would therefore argue that this is what precluded Judas from going to heaven. Now, where we go after we die depends upon how we respond to Jesus before we die. And so let me give you the big picture on this. Let's go to the Bible again. We see all of us are sinners, Romans 3.23. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. But the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, 1 John 1, 7. And those who trust in Christ are completely forgiven of all their sins, according to Ephesians 1, 7. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's Romans 8. Now, that Romans 8 passage is especially uh, pertinent for us because in it, the Apostle Paul lists all the, the possible things that, that could separate us from God's love. Let me take you to that passage. It says this in Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. First, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any other powers, uh, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. So if you know Christ as your Savior, it's possible to lose your health. It's possible to lose your wealth, your reputation, your job, uh, your influence, your friends, everything you've worked for, but no one and nothing can take Jesus away from you. Nothing or nobody can separate you from the love of God. Let me mention a few more scriptures to show this. In John 3, verse 36, Jesus said, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Now, look at that. That word is in the present tense. Has. Present tense. Sometimes we use the word eternal life to refer to that which happens after we die. But when the Bible uses the word eternal life, it's really talking about the very life of God residing in the believer. Which means that it starts the moment we believe in Jesus for salvation. 
That's why when we trust in Christ in that way, in John 5, verse 24, Jesus said, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. So there's a transfer that takes place in the spiritual realm when someone believes in Jesus. They cross over to the side of of everlasting life. And it says that they're not going to come under God's condemnation or judgment because of their sin. Now, it's hard to imagine how words could be any plainer to express the, the security of a true believer. Think of it this way. If eternal life begins the moment you believe, if it's eternal, then you can't lose it when you die. Surely that answers the question of the believer and suicide. A man or a woman or a young person might, in a moment of extreme desperation and sadness, feel so oppressed and trapped and angry or discouraged that they take their life. But can that act separate them from the love of God? I don't believe it can. Is suicide a sin? Yes. Is it wrong? Yes. Does it break the sixth Sixth commandment, yes. But is it an automatic ticket to hell? No, I don't believe it is. Because the Bible says that nothing can separate a believer from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now, having said that, do some people who commit suicide go to hell? Well, yes, like Judas, but not because of the manner of the death that they died, but because of the choices they made before they died. You see, it isn't suicide that sends someone to hell. It's sin that sends people to hell. Especially the greatest sin, the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, is it possible? It is possible, of course, that a person's suicide might might be an indication uh, of the fact that they never really knew Jesus Christ personally. For if they had, they wouldn't have ended their life. But that's for God to know and decide. The real issue for you and for me is, have you responded to Jesus, the one who died for your sins and rose again? Have you trusted him as your savior? Is, is, you know, if so, then your destiny is heaven. You know, suicide is always a tragedy, no matter what angle you look at it. If the person was a believer, well, it's a tragic end to their life, one that they had no right to end themselves. If a person was an unbeliever, then it's a tragic transfer to everlasting existence, separated from God. And it's also a tragedy for those who are left behind, family, friends, loved ones. They've got to pick up the pieces. There's anger and there's guilt. Anger, like, how could they have done that? Uh, Why didn't they tell us how desperate they really felt? But also questions like guilt. You know, what if I had been a better friend or a better parent or spouse or sibling? And even, if only I had been there when they needed me. You know, when my friend uh, tragically ended his own life some years ago, that loss left me asking so many questions. And all I could think about was the words of Jesus in John 10 and verse 10. He said, the thief, that Satan, comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. The Lord Jesus is the giver of life. And he wants to give us life to the full. You know, in the end, we're, we're all left with a, a choice. Yes, Each of us have to make a choice, one that we make every single day. You know, when Moses stood before the people of Israel, uh, right at the edge of the promised land, he gave a speech, and in the end of his speech, he said these words recorded for us in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. He said, I have set before you life and death. Now choose life. May each of us choose life today tomorrow, and all the next days and weeks, and every day until God decides it's time to call us home. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you'll be able to join me next time for another Q&A.